सहनावबदु सहनाव भुनक्तु सहवीद्यं करवावहे तेजस्विनावधि तमस्तुमावित्विशावहे इ ओम शांति 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 ही श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा नाम आलयं करुणालयं नमामि भगवत् पादम् शंकरम् लोकशंकरम् शंकरम् शंकराचार्यम् केशवम् बादरायनम् सूत्र भाष्य गुरुदेव वंदे भगवन्तो पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरु रात्मेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने ब्योम वद्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः अग्नान तिमिरांदस्य ज्ञानान जनशलाकया चक्षुरुन मीलितहिन्येना तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः We'll do some chanting. From verse number 11. Vāyurodhanāt līyate manā Jālapakṣivad rodhasādhanam Chitta vāyava shitkriyāyutāha Shākhayor dvai shakti mūlakā Laya vināshane ubhayarodhane Layagatam punar bhavati no mṛtam Prāna bandhanāt līna mānasam Eka chintanāt nāśa metyada Nashta mānasūt kṛṣṭa yogina Krutya mastikim svasthitim yata Drishya varitam chitta matmana chitva darshanam tattva darshanam Manasam tukim margane trute naiva manasam marga arjavad Vritta yastvaham vritti mashridaha Vṛttayo mano vidyaham mana Vṛttayo mano vidyaham mana Karthurāgnaya prāpyate palam Karma kim param karma tachadam Karma kim param karma tachadam Hmm. Here is an inquiry into the mind. What an irony. You are not trying to inquire something about some other country like Japan or Argentina or Chile or something which is away. And we are not something making inquiry into like how did the coronavirus come to us? Did, was it the origin? Was it Wuhan or someone else? We are talking about the mind, your own mind, my own mind, which I have been using, as you can say, from day one. And the Acharya says, Manasam to Kim, Margane Krude, Naiva Manasam, Marga Arda. When you analyze what is mind, then that analysis lead to the conclusion there is no mind. In other words, the reality given to mind is not true. It is an apparent thing. If it is apparent, that's fine. And that it further clarifies the mithya term of the mind, the apparent nature of the mind. 
and the apparent nature of I. See, the inquiry is not limited to know the mind. As I told you last time, these schools of philosophies, even many schools of yoga, they take the mind to be real. And they talk of some asanas and pranayamas to quieten the mind and to increase the so-called efficiency and remove the stress and all that. We take the mind to be real. Our intention is not to confine to sort of repairing or rectifying or restructuring our thought process. We are talking something beyond that. Please understand the word beyond also. I have talked about that last time. What we are trying to discuss is the nature of the self. What, as of now, there is some self, existing self. Is it real or that is apparent? If this is the existing or obtaining self is an apparent self, then the question comes, what is the real self? The second question comes, what is the relationship between the real self and the apparent self? And how do I relate to this apparent self with, and, with, and how do I relate to my so-called real self? And there is a further question, are there are two selves, <laughs> one real and the other one apparent? All these questions are answered in the discussion that follows from these words onwards. Few things have been talked about in the previous verse that we saw last time. Now he says, Ramana Maharshi in the 18th verse says, Vruttayastvaham Vruttimashrita Vruttayomano Vidyahamana Vruttayaha Vrutti means a thought modification, a thought form. Obtaining thought in the mind, that vruttayaha, or what are they? There are, my, in a, last time we have seen, mind is nothing but the thoughts, flow of thoughts, varieties of vruttis. And all the thoughts can be classified into two categories. What are these? Vruttayastvaham, one is I thought, and another one is non-I. I mean, this thought. One is subject thought and the other one is object thought. Here, this Ramana Maharshi goes further and says, all the thoughts are, all the thought modifications that are there in the mind and the mind is nothing but varieties of thought, thought modification, thought forms and all the thought forms aham vritti maashita. They all depend on the I thought. And therefore, vruttayaha aham vruttim ashritaha. That's a translation or prose order of the first line. So mind is nothing but the thought forms. And these thought forms are dependent upon aham I thought. Okay. Now what is that? As of now, take this I thought as ego. These thoughts, object thoughts, are depend upon this ego. And then he says, so, vruttayaha manaha vidyaham, man, vidyaham manaha. So, to know, when we say mind is nothing but the thoughts, therefore, mind is nothing but Aham, but the ego. That means inquiry into the mind is nothing but inquiry into the self. As I said, we are not interested in just knowing or understanding the mind. We are interested in knowing or understanding who is this I, obtaining I. Who is this ego, or what we call as ego? Or what is its relationship with consciousness? How, in which way it is connected to awareness? And if connected, are there two things? 
one ego and another. Therefore, he says, when you understand this ego, understanding the mind is nothing but understanding the I thought. Okay. Now look at this. Whatever is appreciated as I, as of now, is nothing but a thought. Okay? And that I thought, what is called as ahankara or ego, is nothing but notion. And in reality, it is superimposition upon the awareness, the consciousness, which which is free from any kind of modifications, which is free from any kinds of limitations, which is free from any, any kind of uh, connections or anything. That is the awareness. The I ego, I mean, the Hanji would say, you know, what is this ego? The, the fellow has a history. <laughs> that is the ego. And when you say, I have a history, that means what, you know, ego always carries the past with him. And that load of the past is so heavy, the individual crushes its, his or her own presence under the load of the past. Always remembering which past? Not the pleasant one, but the unpleasant. And the pleasant past is remembered only when the person who, with whom you had a pleasant time is gone. <laughs> but while he or she is alive, they remember all the unpleasant past. That is ego, history. It carries, it wants to be unhappy. It somehow, somehow wants to be a pitiable person. It wants to create the self-pity upon itself. This is ahankar. I am this much only. This much, these are my limitations. Certain things, I cannot do this. And I cannot achieve this. I cannot change this. I cannot modify this. I cannot restructure this. That is always felt with reference to the objects of the world, more so with the near and dear one. I cannot change them. I cannot, I cannot ask them to think, rethink or reconsider anything. And therefore, there is always a pain. This is aham vritti, I sense. Now, there are idam vrittis. These are, this is I sense. Along with the I thought in the mind, I told you last time, the trick is that it's like the dream, same individual become the subject and object who projected the dream. The same consciousness is as though a subject and as though an object and that object that is experience is here, the thought form. All these idam vrittis, all these thought forms, are keep on changing. Two way. It changes in terms of Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha. This whole world, if you look at this way, is nothing but five four. There is a world of sound. There is a world of touch. There is a world of forms and colors. There is a world of taste. And there is a world of smell. That's it. Nothing else then. All our experiences can be reduced to fivefold experiences. Shabda, Sparsa, Rupa, Rasa and Gandha. And being a human being, having well-developed emotive mind, you can say experiences are emotional experiences, emotional connections. But to have that emotional experience also, you need to have Shabda, Sparsa, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha. That's all. That is the ultimate, ultimate thing that you experience. Whole world is nothing but this fivefold world. And they keep changing. This is Sabda sometimes, sometimes Parsha, sometimes Rupa, touch, sometimes forms, 
sometimes smell, and within that also varieties of things come and go. They always change, depending upon the person to person, depending upon time to time, depending upon place to place. And one more thing, you experience Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, you don't need even the objects. Your memory is enough. <laughs> memory can bring about those experiences, you know. So, an object which is out of mind can be out of sight. But that which is out of sight cannot be out of mind. Can be, I mean, out of sight can not, need not be out of mind. Your you are near and dear with staying abroad. Why staying in abroad now in this lockdown? Staying next in the next street. <coughs> they are out of sight, but not out of mind. Now this I notion, what we call ahankar, this and this, this vritti, object vritti, that can be compared to, one is keeps changing, going and coming. Like daily wages worker, who has no, when the day is over, a typical Indian thing, the salary is paid and the fellow is gone. No benefits, of provident fund or leave or nothing. And it may, may not come tomorrow, may come tomorrow. But in that construction industry, typical in India, there is one in Gujarati, we call it Mukardam, you know, the supervisor. He is on the roll. He is a permanent guy. He has benefits of salaries and, and bonus and, and privilege and provident fund and some extra benefit also. When the boss is good and happy and the site is completed, some money in his, he wants to buy a home or he has a marriage, the boss will give him extra money. He did get money. So these daily wages workers are like, these idam vrittis are like these daily wages workers. Aham vritti is that our mukaddam, we call it, is a supervisor. But he is in between fellow. The supervisor is is neither a daily wage employee nor the owner but in between that means what this ahankara is neither awareness nor this object it is neither subject nor it is object primarily it is a thought i is a thought body doesn't say I am man, I say this. Body itself doesn't claim that I am man. You know, body doesn't own up. Body doesn't have eye sense. I am healthy or unhealthy. I have stomach problem or that prana doesn't say that. Eyes don't say I am blind or etc. That I am so and so is a thought. Your memory doesn't say anything. But this fellow says, I am sad, I am unhappy, I am a failure. <laughs> That's also a memory based, you know. I am failure. He thinks, what a big discovery. <laughs> I am a failure. He says, this is all memory based. That I, consciousness, is neither failure nor success. Consciousness is neither man or woman or body or prana, nothing. We'll see Vigrahendriya Pranaditam Nahamekam Satat Jadam Yasat. After two verses, the discussion will come. But then, consciousness doesn't say, I am Sukhi and Dukhi. Nor mind says, I am Sukhi Dukhi. Mind feels Sukha Dukha, that is okay. Mind has a pain, that is okay. But there is in between fellow who takes this, which is body-mind complex, which is seen as I. So it is neither subject, nor it is out of, it is object. 
it is mixture of two consciousness awareness somehow identifying with these thought forms and it is not even awareness that identifies and says that i am with this with only with reference to body i can say i am man woman indian american japanese etc only with reference to prana i can say i am happy i mean healthy and healthy because of physiological functions with reference to memory i can say the successful and failure and dukhi and i may be apprehensive etc with reference to state of the mind i can say i am happy and happy or anxiety or fear frightful etc with reference to buddhi i may say that i am intelligent and i am engineer or doctor etc but this is that all that with is with reference to i consciousness is not body mind complex so the ahankara is a mixture now look at this how it is born how this amvritti comes take our good at good old example of rope snake in a twilight two persons are walking and one with not having clear vision and one with a sharp eyed fellow other one the first person having not too much of clear vision somehow say hey look at this is a snake okay the other fellow says oh no come on he just obviously when this fellow is snake he just stops then looks carefully and says this is not and he discovers that this is a rope and he says this is not a snake but this is rope when these two guys are pointing out this is rope and this is snake they are not pointing out to two different thing it is not like these two things that were in my hands you look at me and tell this i say what is this in my hand you may say swami ji this is mobile phone and this is pen there are two distinct objects but when these two guys are telling this is snake and this is rope both of them are referring to same object the when by the word this they refer the same thing they are not referring to different thing. now when they refer to the same thing by the word this so there are three possibilities one both of them are right second both of them are wrong and third one is more right than the other or one is right and other one is false they can both be right like this you know i show you this tumbler and i drink the liquid in it you could see that what i drank and if i ask you what did i drink in english you may say swami ji you drank water someone may say in hindi swami ji you drank pani now both of this person are referring to same vastu what i drank but both are right because pani and water are synonym or jalam and udakam one fellow says you drank udakam other fellow says you drank jalam but jalam and udakam are synonym in sanskrit similarly here both are right provided rope and snake are synonym which are which is not true there are two opposite words and both can be wrong also if one fellow says this is snake the other fellow says no 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 this is not snake this is a mala old garland thrown on the road and the third person says this is rope out of the three two are totally wrong 
because they both refer to something else. When this fellow says this is rope, and the other fellow says this is snake, the third possibility that one is right and another is not so right. In his own perception, that person is right, subjectively. But objectively, that person is not true. Now look at this. From where did the snake come? Let us analyze. First of all, the snake has not come from outside and sat on the rope. It is true. If this a natural question comes, A says this is snake, B says this is rope, the A says no, no, it is snake. B says, come on, this is rope only. I am seeing snake. He says, you may see the snake, but it is rope only. If it is rope, how do I see the snake? It's a question on the part of the A. What is the answer? Ignorance. To see something other than what it is, is certainly born out of ignorance. So, there is two things, okay? What are the two things? There is a rope plus rope ignorance is a so-called knowledge or the right word would be notion that this is snake. I tell you the rope, rope awareness is there. It mixes with the ignorance. Why? Had that person A not have the awareness of the rope, he would have walked away quietly. Even if it were a real snake, <laughs> he would have stepped on it and walked out. There is awareness, there is rope awareness and somehow that rope awareness got coupled with rope ignorance. That gave rise to the concept of snake. Now where is this awareness? I mean where is this, this ignorance of the rope? Let us look at it. Where does the rope ignorance is? You cannot say the rope ignorance is on the rope. If it were in the rope, anyone who sees should have seen him it as a snake because it has ignorance. Or rope had a choice. Suppose no, 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 rope decides. That Mr. A, I, he wrote through ignorance to Mr. A. So he A saw the snake and he did not throw it to the B. He did not throw it to the B, therefore B saw the rope. No, it's an inert person. Ignorance doesn't, is not there in the rope. Much less it is in the snake. You cannot say the ignorance was in the snake, but the snake is not born. <laughs> the snake is born out of ignorance. How can there be ignorance on the rope? I mean, how can there be ignorance on the snake? So ignorance is neither on the rope nor on the snake. You cannot find the locus. No, 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 Swamiji, it is in twilight. <laughs> Because in daylight, the fellow will not make mistake. And in a pitch dark also will not make mistake. That means what? The ignorance is in twilight. If the ignorance is in twilight, the other fellow also should have seen that. <laughs> the bee also should see the rope as a snake because that is a twilight for the other guy also. It is not therefore Mr. A is a twilight and therefore he sees a snake. And for B, it is a daylight, therefore E sees the rope. No, 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 Swamiji, it is in the eyes. <laughs> Even if it is in the eyes, that fellow, whenever he or she sees the rope, should see the snake. 
In that being a case, this person can never hang the clothes. <laughs> because if it is in the eyes, he will end up seeing the snake only all the time. There is ignorance. The only plausible answer. Listen this carefully. How is the snake born? It is this. Rope awareness plus ignorance. There is awareness of the rope. In that awareness, somehow ignorance came. There is no answer where from. Here also, the rope is illumined. You become aware of the rope because of twilight. Unfortunately, the self or the consciousness is self-evident. It is one thing that you can never miss. Try to miss yourself. I am missing. You may miss your spouse. You may miss your children. You may miss your friends. <laughs> Sometimes, if, if Punya is there, you may miss the class also. <laughs> Sorry. They, they say also, Swamiji, you have done the best thing. You know, for the first week, it was such an ordeal. How to pass time? Now you have started classes. <laughs> so if I cancel the class, you may miss me. The time passing. No, no, no. They say, sincere students have, I'm just joking. You don't get hurt. Sincere students have said, Samiji, every day we are waiting since morning. We plan our life, you know, cooking because maids don't come. The cook don't come and the available maid, husband, buddy, hubbies are untrained maids. <laughs> so they cannot perform the job to the satisfaction. And the lady has to do the job again. <laughs> and that is why. And then everything is good outside, but you cannot go outside, you know. And therefore, they have to plan. Swamiji, we are waiting since morning and we plan for the class and since 6.37 we are ready with our dinner and supper and all that thing and for the day. Anyway, you may miss so many things but you can't miss yourself. The self-awareness is, is always there. Since the self is self-evident, since the self is self-revealing, self is self-existence, Parama Purana Sat, we will see in the next verse, that being the case, there is possibility, there is awareness, there is a possibility of taking itself to be different than body. That is Maya. That is ignorance. Somehow, the self-ignorance, the self-awareness, plus the self-ignorance gives rise to notion of so-called ahankara. Okay? This ahankara is nothing but, like the snake, is nothing but superimposed thing on the rope itself. So also ahankara is superimposed on the conscious, on the self. It is a thought form. Somehow I take myself to be limited. Somehow I take myself to be man, woman, happy, unhappy, healthy, unhealthy, etc. Sad, successful, failure. There is, that is why they call it anirvachaniyam magnana. You cannot categorize. You cannot fix it where it came and why it came. There is no answer. Why there is ignorance? When from ignorance started? There were people usually ask us, which was the first birth of Swamiji? There is no first birth. Ignorance is always beginningless. It can come to the end, but then it is always beginningless. Ignorance don't stay anywhere else. Ignorance stays in the awareness. Awareness of the Vastu. 
awareness of the rope gives rise to gives rise to the snake possibility not necessary both of them became aware a became aware of this object b also became aware of this object samanyataya gnatam there is something that was there but what it is visheshataya what it is one concludes that it is a snake and the other one is that this is you each one of us know aham asmi i am i am is self evident self revealing fact but i am so and so that is a vishesh gnanam what we call it one fellow said in this two statements this is rope and this is snake this is common i am man or i am woman i am happy i am young i am old i am middle age i am teenage etc etc i am happy i am unhappy i am sad i am frustrated i am etc that i am i am i am is there aham asmi aham bhami that samanya gnanam is always there vishesh gnanam specific that the conclusion that i am sad unhappy karta bhokta etc this notion is born out of ignorance that is i thought that is aham therefore like even rope awareness plus ignorance gives rise to snake self awareness plus ignorance gives rise to ahankar now let us go further the snake is superimposed as it is called in english sanskrit word is adhyastha on the rope how what is the size of the snake the size of the snake is the size of the rope what are the curves of the snake the curves of the snakes is nothing but the curves of the rope what is the color of the snake it belongs to rope similar this ahankar unfortunately superimposed on the self which is satya which is eternal so ahankara also becomes nitya understand why ahankara is nitya samsara is nitya nanto na chadir na cha sampratishta ashvatthamenam suvirudamulam etc 15th chapter verses there is this ahankara being superimposed or born out of self ignorance notion and that self being eternal ahankara also becomes eternal but it is eternal how long as long as there is ignorance and when the ignorance is removed ahankara is no more there so vidyaham manaha that aham is ignorance born ahankara is just a i thought it is mere concept you are entity people say this you know who am i <laughs> what you am i <laughs> who am i mean it's your concept who am i and who am i is my concept that is it You know, and when they say, "Who are, do you know? Who am I?" I said, "That is only problem. You don't know who am I. Better know. You will never say who am I. Do you know who am I? This question will not. The statement will not come. You know. <laughs> and then I have seen some people. You know, when they come late night and they knock the bell and somebody asks that, who is it?" In the typical Indian husband, oh, you know, Nabi, Nada comes. 
<laughs> the word comes from the Navi Neville. I am there. What is this I? No, that's a concept that you entertain, and that ahankara is there eternal as long as there is ignorance. And this will never go by asking, Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? The rope, <laughs> the, sorry, the snake keeps on asking, Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Ignorance never goes. So the ahankara never goes. It is exactly like the minister who has committed a crime himself is leading the inquiry, I mean committed some corruption, he is a chief of inquiry commission. That fellow will always justify its own existence. So also ahankara will always justify its own existence. And that is why each, most of the human being has this tendency, I am Mr. or Miss Right always. What they call it, defense mechanism. Even if they have made mistake, but they will just, you know, it is because of this I happen to do. Otherwise I don't do that. Pass the buck to someone else. That ego is is permanent because superimposition is done on the consciousness. Which is Swamiji he used to tell this beautiful, you know, this Ramayana story. And then Lord Rama, the Sita being was kidnapped by a demon called Ravana, and Lord Rama goes to get back her. And Ravana lived in Sri Lanka. And then with the army of monkeys, they go. The battle lasts for quite a number of days. And finally, and all, most of his commanders were killed, including his son Meghnada and his brother. All were killed. Nobody was left. Ravana comes to fight. There is a beautiful thing in that. Rama keeps on killing him. It seems Ravana had ten heads. Rama kept on chopping one after the another head. But when the head was removed and by the time Rama chops up the another head with his arrow, the, the head which was removed in that place, new head pops up. Rama thought, I'll just kill him all the, I'll chop off all the heads and Ravana will be killed. But before he could do that, before he could complete even half of them, the, 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 that heads which were chopped off were replaced by a new head. And then finally, Vibhishana comes to him, his help, his own brother, and tells him the secret. Oh Lord, you can never kill him by killing his head. There is a nectar in his nabi, Amrutam. You pierce that, all the heads will be gone. His ahankara is like a ten headed demon. Right, these rupas are there, ahankara. You remove one, another one comes out. Another identification. Sukhi, Dukhi one is gone. I am anxious. Anxious is gone. I am stressed. The stress is gone. I am very angry now. <laughs> that is gone. I am very apprehensive about future. One or other head will come. Then symbolizes infinite heads of Ahankara. Then what nourishes this head? What gives rise to new, new heads? That is a nectar. <laughs> and here, the nectar is avidya, ignorance, you know. Therefore, this ignorance is also in the 15th chapter. Some of you have been studying Gita. You know, Urdva Mula Madashakam Ashwatham Prahuravyam Sandamsi Asya Paranani Yastam Vedasa Vedavita 
अदश्चूर्धम प्रसुतास्त शाखा गुण प्रवृद्धा विषय प्रवाला अदश्य मूलासतता कर्माबंधी मनुष्य लोक न रूपमसेह तथोपलभ्य नो न चादीर न On the one hand, it is an ashwatham. It will not be there tomorrow, and it has it is no beginning, no end. It is endless. What is endless? As long as the ignorance is, new heads of ahankara will be, and it is mentioned in Ramayana, beautifully mentioned. The ten-headed demon means that karta bhogta. It's ahankara, very beautiful simile. You know who is ahankara? Primarily, karta bhogta, karma karta, and therefore karma phal bhogta. But how does that ahankara perform action? How does ahankara enjoy the karma phalas? Through karma indriyas, he does the karma, and through gnana indriyas, he enjoys. So that karta bhogta is ten-headed Ravan. Okay, please don't take it literally. No, <laughs> Ravana. He said, otherwise, if Ravana has a corona, image, <laughs> which knows first it will be blocked. And suppose Ravana has a common cold, he would require ten bottles of Vicks vapor of to smear on the face. And how much headache Ravana will have? That apart from that, the fellow cannot sleep. You cannot turn the head. You must have a special bed, you know, with a hole. When you turn, the forehead will go. Down. <laughs> the six heads will go down, and others will remain like this. And he doesn't know which head wants water. Some tongue may feel thirsty, but where to pour the water? He might get confused. <laughs> In between, ten, fifteen years ago, I received very beautiful, I mean, very interesting joke in WhatsApp. One of the letters. We had a very price rise, and then the inflation was high. Then the inflation has touched Ravana also. So he went to the pawn shop and said, "Give me one cigarette and nine beads. I can't afford ten cigarettes." He, he was. He also had a fiscal crunch, you know. This is not ten-headed fellow. He's okay. And then Rama pierced. Beautifully mentioned by Vibhishana told him, "Hey Prabhu, send this as Rama sent Brahmastra. Then Brahmastra is Tattvamasi. Then Brahmastra is Aham Brahmasmi. Then Brahmastra is Guru Upadesha. That's all you can compare. Okay, don't stretch the example." <laughs> Ravana was fighting against Rama. This this Brahmastra is sent by Guru. The very teaching is Astra. But then student cannot fight; he has to surrender. So limitation. I mean, only this much part of the example is applicable. That when the Brahmastra was sent, that means the nectar was removed, was destroyed, which was there in his navel, and Navi. Ravana got killed, so that avidya is destroyed by Brahmastra of Shastra Upadesha, and therefore he says, you know, vidyaham manaha, and this surrender. Please understand here. Look with this surrender, or we say shraddha. The surrender is ultimately discovering the ahankara to be apparent. There will be ahankar. <laughs> I sense, but the Swami Ji would say it will be enlightened ego. I sense because I awareness is there, but there is enlightened. It is like you continue seeing the sunrise. You continue seeing the sunset, but there is an enlightenment. Even the one who knows sees the sunrise and sunset, and the ignorant one also sees the sunrise and sunset. Like even the modern children, 
We teach this, <laughs> this is English language, you know. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> the stars are neither twinkling nor little. But the child thinks it's real. But you, the grown-up person, enlightened person, see them twinkling, but you know it's an illusion. See them as little, but it's an illusion. I sense will continue, but that ahankara, that aham is not ahankara, it's an enlightened eye. Or vehvara, there is I sense, and that therefore real surrender, ultimate surrender, is this surrender of ahankara. And ahankara cannot be surrendered. <laughs> because the very person who surrenders is Ankara. <laughs> the one who gives up, the giver up itself is Ankara. Therefore, there is a Vakya. You know, Satya Nrute Tyaja Dharmam Adharmam Cha Satya Nrute Ube Tyaja. Dharma, dharmam, satya, nrute, sarvam, tektva, yena, tyajasi, tat, tyaja. You may give up things, but the very giver up needs to be given up. That is a real surrender. <laughs> I, now it comes to my mind, you know, Puja Swamiji often mention this experience, especially in the north of India, they sing this arti, and the puja is over. There is arti, and that arti is jai jagadish hare swami jai jagadish hare. Oh, and then there is one line: sab kuch hai tan man dhan swami sab kuch hai tera. Everything belongs to you, Lord. Kya lage mera? What belongs to me? Nothing belongs to me. Tera tujhko arpan. What belongs to you? I am returning it back. Tera tujugo harpan jai jagadisha. I remember the whole thing, you know, it used to take 10 15 minutes. Good description. But in in nutshell, this fellow goes to Narayana and says, Swami Jai Jagadisha, Tanamanadhan, my body and my mind and all my possessions really belong to you, and I return back to Tera Tujko Harpan. What belongs to me? Nothing belongs to me. Jai Jagadhyan went up. Somehow Lord took a note of it. This fellow, Mr. So-and-so, had given me everything. Next day he comes and does the same thing. And next day he comes and does the same thing. This is because that Ahankara, the giver up is there. He gives and takes it back. Like those, some children, you know, when they come here, I give them toffees. And the mom, modern mom, don't want them. We eat so many. So then she says, give it, give back one to Swamiji. And they will come. I say, okay, give me one. They will come with the toffee, put the toffee here in my palm, and then take it back. <laughs> exactly, because that giver up is not given up. Surrender of Ahankara, please understand, is to know the apparent nature of Ahankara. That ego itself is mithya. That discovery is ultimate surrender. All what all you possess, you may give up your possessions. What we call it, Mamakara, I can give up. Ahankara is not like your upavastra or shirt or a dress I removed and gave it up. No. It is you. How can you give up unless you realize I am the fall. The rope can, the snake cannot give up the snake. It is to discover that I am false entity. I don't really exist. I am superimposed on the rope. That discovery is surrender. Exactly like in a relative world, you know. Some men, I remember Purvashan, there was one couple. The man was very angry person, very short -term. Small things he will flare up. If something is not placed properly, he will flare up. And then in a good moment, then he will shout, and then the husband will all these. And 
and then there will be truce and he will say you are so kind and you are so forgiving i'm sorry he would say i'm only you are also great person gujarati she used to say tame sona na manas only one thing is this sona ni thali ma this one lord but you are so angry person please give up your anger okay from tomorrow i will give up the anger <laughs> idiot you are personification of anger <laughs> how can you give up you are personified anger similarly you are personified anxiety you are personified worry you are personified stress you are personified unhappiness you are personified a sadness you are personified fear and then they go to some swami and then they, tomorrow onwards i'll not be sad hey you can that is you all this is born out of ignorance self being self is self evident self some this is maya from where the ignorance come you don't know and somehow there is i notion a concept this is sense that i am so and so and that is ahankara and that ahankara doesn't mean asserting oneself that sense that i am limited sense that i am this much sense that i am man and woman and intelligent and dull and happy and unhappy and successful and failure and except all that this is to be given up and only brahmastra when released from a teacher in form of teaching will help you to give up that arm not otherwise and remember there are no two fellows this is a limitations of the language this is where you need to see the lakshyartha the implied meaning of it they say unreal self and real self the real self is consciousness limitless existence and limitless fullness limitless is a real self the limited fellow is ahankara there are no two things the same vastu appears as differently therefore we say lo look something that is a real the ignorant fellow who sees a snake for them he say there is a rope but where you have to discover the rope right where there is a snake falsifying the snake itself is a discovery of the rope or put it otherwise discovering this as a rope is nothing but falsification of the snake. discovering myself as such is a falsification of ahankara that's all it is there are no two sides with it and there were don't think that i am sitting in meditation and will see atma the very idiot <laughs> swami ji would say who want to see the atma himself is a it is like snake trying to see the rope it can never happen you have to surrender to the teacher in proper attitude and study the shastra and see the meanings of these words clearly manasam tu kim margane grute naiv manasam marga arjavat means for not falsifying the mind you have to understand the fallacious nature of aham vrittaya stvaham vritti mashritaha vrittayo manaha vidyaham manaha that vidyaham so that inquiry into the mind is nothing but inquiry into the self and when i say inquiry into the self is not to be carried out by yourself it has to be carried you have to, you have to use a means of not you need to have inquiry because of there is ignorance and ignorance can never go unless you employ proper and adequate means of not in the proper and adequate like to see the form in a color eyes are the means of knowledge and proper eyes should be there adequate capacity should be there similarly proper and adequate means of knowledge for self inquiry is study of the shastra 
from a competent teacher who knows the truth and who knows how to unfold this, then then he releases that Brahmastra and that destroys the Ankara. There are not two, two eyes. The so-called obtaining eye is, is, is apparent. And the real eye is always there, is never ever displaced by this apparent eye. As long as there is ego, consciousness cannot come, and as long as there is ego cannot come, and there is a gali ati sankari tame dona samai. Prem gali is very short, you cannot be two, and then if one is there, other is not there, Hari is there, you are not there, you are there, Hari is not there, like that. It's okay to begin with. This is a good yoga shastra. But then there are no two things. One is that which is obtaining I <clears throat> is a notion, just a concept, just my own, my own self imagination. I would say, I don't know how far it is proper. It's a self superimposition. And where there is superimposition, there alone is a real self. So called unreal self exist as long as there is ignorance and the unreal has to discover the real means the ignorance needs to be removed and that is anadi that is anirvachaniya sahaja magnana it is there right from the birth and that can go by teaching and then once it is gone aham is understood that idam don't create problem. <laughs> and therefore, he says, Vidyaham Manaha, please inquiring into mind is the same as inquiry into I thought. It is a thought. And how this I thought is formed, that is further clarified. How to destroy that aham is further clarified in the next verse that we will look into next week. Namaste. <clears throat> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyodam Hari Om Namaste.